Hey everyone, the name is Director, and today's video is a question. And the question is, what is an intuitive awakening? And let me tell you why I ask you this. I ask you this because I'm working on a theory of cognitive function development. I'm asking myself, what is it to use your cognitive functions to your fullest potential? What does it mean to be an intuitive? What does it mean to reach a new level of intuition beyond what you had before? And I ask you this because I feel often the MBTI and personality psychology has a very flat definition of intuition. It appears almost as if intuition is the same to every person who has it, when in fact it's something different to every single individual. How you experience intuition, that's you, that's up to you. And what it means to you and how you think about it and how you come about it, that depends on where you are at in life. So what I've seen is there are multiple theories out there that describe growth and awakening and development of intuition. I want to start off by saying what I think intuitive awakening is to me. To me intuitive awakening is just a new level of seeing beyond what you have seen before. So for me it is it requires a degree of novelty. It requires you to look at something not just abstractly, not just philosophically, but with new eyes. So when you hit intuitive awakening, when you hit a new lens, or when you've outgrown your old eyes and when you start to look at the world with new perspective. So an example for me was when I was listening to somebody talk and I was deconstructing and I was seeing every single word they said and I understood the meaning behind it. It was like I was not just looking at it, I was not just listening to what they were saying, but I saw beneath it all what they meant, where, what, it, what it all came from, what it all amounted to existentially, what it was and its source. So it, intuitive awakening requires a degree of novelty in the sense that you have to feel like you haven't seen this before. You haven't thought this way before, you haven't had this theory before, you haven't been able to use this theory the way you do right now. So it is a boost in, it can be confidence and that means an increased sense of vision or it can be a boost in expressiveness and that means an ability to explain something that you've never been able to explain before and an ability to do things that you've never been able to do before with that intuition. Now, the models I'm working with in developing a cognitive function development theories are actually two or three or four in particular. The first one is spiral dynamics. Spiral dynamics believes we have a progression in consciousness. So we start out almost barely conscious of ourselves. We don't even know we are individuals. We don't know what intuition is. We don't know how it works, but we can still sense it on an instinctive level. According to spiral dynamics, our first level of consciousness is that instinctive level of just knowing it is there, just knowing it, you feel it, this tingling sensation in you. You could say for an extroverted intuitive, it is feeling like there is something out there. There is some pattern out there waiting for me, but what is it? There is, I'm pulled to something, but I don't know why. I see something, but I don't know what. Well, now the thunder strikes. Yes, I see a thunder strike outside. It's dark. I'm sitting here, I'm shooting a video, it's completely dark outside, it's dark here. And um, yeah, uh, it's exciting, it's exciting to make a video when it's thundering outside. So, where was I? Yeah, it is just something instinctive. And it beca it goes from being something instinctive to being something you think is almost magical. It's like... Wow, there are patterns. That's the second realization of consciousness. Like, wow, there are patterns. Wow, I, there are patterns, but I have no idea how they work. There are connections to be made. There are things happening around me. There are opportunities, but I have no idea where they come from. Wow, that's, that's the second stage of consciousness, that of 
the wow of magic of that surprise, you know, you that surprise you see in a child. And it uh, goes from being something magical to becoming something impulsive. At first it's just something you, you're wowed by. And then it's something you're like drawn to. It's like, what is this? I want to try this out. What is that connection? What is that pattern? What is that opportunity? What is that possibility? Why can't I jump off a cliff? Why is she telling me I can't do that? Why is they, Why are there so many rules? Why am I not allowed to do this? Yeah, the third stage, the red stage, is just that of recognizing what you want to do, which is jump off a cliff and what, see what happens, and what you can't do of realizing that there are things you're not allowed to do, connections you're not allowed to make, things you're not allowed to say, freedom you're not allowed or given. And then there is that of just acceptance of rules, which is just... Uh, Accepting that there are rules to connections. It's not just connections. It's not just testing things out. It's not just patterns. It's not just an opportunity. But there are rules to how things happen. I think you're not truly experiencing a heightened intuitive consciousness until you're able to see the rules behind intuition, which is when you're able to think and apply rules to understand how it works. It can be social rules, it can be norms, it can be values, or it can be thinking rules, it can be uh, plans, it can be charts, it can be maps. It can be purely logical. I think in its nature it's just something purely logical. After that, it's that. After this pattern, it's that pattern. After jumping a cliff, it's death. <laughs> Imminent death. Crushed. Yes. There, these are the rules. So I think in the fourth stage, the blue stage, it's just uh, that of recognizing that there are connections and that everything is interrelated and seeing the rules and uh, interplays between things. Nothing comes out of nowhere. Nothing is just magic. Nothing just happens for no reason. But there are patterns and connections and chains and everything leads to everything. You start to recognize that this will lead to that, will lead to that. And that's when your intuition finally becomes principled. Then, uh, then there's a level 5 which relates to achievement or success. There's a level 5 that's orange. It's described as orange. It's when you're able to use these rules and apply these rules and to create your own chains and your own connections. It's, what if I do this? Now I know how these systems work. Now I know how these connections come about. Now I know how these patterns happen. Now I know opportunities don't come from nowhere. So now I know how I could influence this. What could happen if I did this? What could happen if I tried that? What could happen if I tested this out? And that's where achievement comes from. Enabled, being able to truly manipulate the flow of change and of opportunities and of potential in being able to make connections, read data, read patterns, and also to be able to change patterns, adjust patterns, and use them and surf on them like you're some kind of professional surfer. Just floating on the waves, just, ah, oh, that wave is coming now. Now I know I can do this, and then I can do that. And now I'm going to be able to do a trick that nobody else has seen, and everyone's going to be like, wow. So I think intuitive awakening... Uh, Every step of this, it can it's keep goes it keeps on going. It goes to green, it goes to yellow. Every step of it is just an additional layer of seeing. It's just uh, getting a new pair of glasses added on top of the glasses that you already had, added on top of the glasses that you already have. Yes, we're all doomed to become uh, to start wearing glasses, to start seeing new layers, to start seeing new things. And the old layers don't stop being important. Magic still exists. There are still, there is still the instinctive state of intuition. There is still that impulsive level of just wanting to try things out. All those things remain. It's just new things added on top of it. Suddenly there's that. It's like a level up. It's like a new skill added on top of the old one. So an intuitive wake awakening is not where other things cease to be important. And here's the thing, I, I think with cognitive function development, 
it's not that cognitive function development aligns with health it doesn't mean you become happier it doesn't mean you become better or that something has improved necessarily in your life you can still have struggles you can still have uh, some uh, difficulties in your relationship you can have struggles at work you can have problems in life you can have things that are not going the way they're supposed to you can go through a rough patch you can feel a loss of confidence you can feel life is difficult or heavy these things will still happen it's not you know there's a difference between development and health people forget it all the time and that's why i think they should be held separate health is something you have to be working on alongside development at all times you can never forget about health health is am i happy okay i'm seeing all these new things but am i happy okay i'm doing all these new things but am i happy and why am i doing it am i doing it for myself or am i doing it for others am i uh, doing something i like or am i doing it for my parents sake am i expressing myself am i do i do i believe in myself do i have high self-esteem do i trust myself that's health and health and cognitive function development that must be something different an intuitive awakening is not going to lead to an increase of happiness in your life but it still holds value because it's still going to give you novelty and that feeling that you've hit a new world like if you look at the hero's journey the way I see it, the hero's journey is like a clock. You move from the known to the unknown, you start up a new adventure, you're challenged, it's difficult, it's heavy, how do you do this, how does it work? You beat it, you conquer it, you master it, you get rewarded by it, and then you start up a new adventure. And that's how it works, the spiral dynamics works the same way. It's uh, every stage brings on new challenges, new problems, new issues. So. Some things are going to stop being important to you or become less important to you as you move in the spiral dynamics stage. What they tend to say is that first it's about, can be about uh, one second. At first it can be about survival, then it can be about safety, then it can be about power, then it can be about order, then it can be about autonomy, then it can be about community, then it can be about integration, then it can be about harmony. Well, every level brings on new challenges, new possibilities, new opportunities. So, spiral dynamics just highlights a progression. You know, something interesting I noticed is that we're all going through these different stages. You know, you don't get to a point where I think the other stages stop being interesting. You know, what I always feel is uh, I can meet a person, I can meet a child, I can meet somebody who's just like in the red stage or somebody who's in the beige stage or somebody who's in the blue stage. And they can be fascinating people. They can have interesting thoughts, new ideas, things I haven't thought about. You know what I feel like? Like is is there is an interplay? You know, uh, the magic that uh, a child can bring to life by showing new possibilities and making you think about things that can be fascinating to hear about, no matter what stage you're in, because it's like, what is that magic? What explanations do I have for it? What can I think? How can I think about it? How can I use this? How can I understand this? So I think it's also just like we're living alongside each other and it's just different stages in life. It's different things that are happening. And I understand that's important to relationships. I understand that's important to what you do at work. You know, if you hit a new level of seeing, which is where I feel I am right now, I feel like I've hit a new level. I've gone from one stage to that other. You have to start rethinking a lot of things in terms of work and what you're doing. You have to see, okay, what's next? I think every time you hit a new level, you also need to think, okay, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do differently about this? Where am I going to go with this? What am I, how gonna, am I going to put this to practice? Otherwise, I think this can drive a sense of boredom. If you keep doing the same things, 
with new eyes. What you used to be thinking of as fun and stimulating is gonna be is gonna look boring and mundane and trivial. So I think intuitive awakening is also just bringing back. Okay, what will I do in each stage? What will I start up now? How will I use my new eyes? How will I put this to practice? Because intuitive awakening is a new pair of eyes. I've said this probably ten times in this video. At least I hope it's get gonna get you thinking. It's definitely getting me thinking. I've got some videos planned on cognitive function development. Uh, got some uh, theories planned on cognitive function health let me tell you what your thoughts are <laughs> okay sorry tell me what your thoughts are on this topic what you think intuitive awakening is what your latest intuitive awakening was if you experienced one how it felt what stage you think you are at in development in consciousness in accessing and using your functions that's it for today. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you all in the next one.